when you would open the wall chart. See if I can get it to actually open. When you open the wall chart. Good Lord. Ah, there it is. Now I can't see you. Well, if you got a dollar, well, just lousy down. You know that I got rhythm that could suit your budget found. All right, it's Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile going to do a shop with me video, or at least I'm going to try and do a shop with me video. I have been spending the week on the road f uh, for my day job, and this morning started the day in Nebraska and heading back to Chicago and doing a little stop partway along the way at the Brass Armadillo. Uh, so we're going to see if they're going to let me film inside. Uh, wish me luck. Zooming up to the sign uh, to show it because there are people, it looks like they're actually busy here today. There are people walking in and out, so not to get their faces, I'm scanning up. But this is the Brass Armadillo. Mm, I think it's considered Des Moines. Might be, I might be outside of Des Moines by, at this point. Not sure, I just know I am in Iowa and I'm entering the Brass Armadillo. So I've been here before, and one of the things I like is I spend a lot of time, probably too much time, going through all of the cases. They have several rows of cases like this. And what I like about it, there's a little bell right here. You can ring the bell for service. So if you see something you want in the case, you don't have to go hunt somebody down. They will come to you. This is one of those areas of collectibilities that I don't even understand You know how the legal aspect of it is. But these appear to be legitimate vintage police badges and like I guess you can't stop somebody from buying and selling them but I don't know if I lived in Eloy I don't know if I'd want somebody that could just like pick up a badge and say that they're a cop no matter where they were coming from but they do make pretty cool if you're doing it honorably enough I know my father had been a cop for 30 years and he collected the patches which probably is no different um, but the patches were a little bit easier to come by. So he had patches from police stations from all over the country. Um, but I don't, I didn't realize you could actually buy police badges as well. But when I saw this booth, I knew I wanted to showcase it because one, they have a great collection of paint by numbers for sale. Um, you know, 20, 30, $40 range. But this was kind of the fun one that I like to be able to see is they hung these two together. You can see the way they did it. They show this was model 37S2. So this was a kit that was sold, but you can see how different it was done. So this one, you know, they've got the blue and the white in the background, you know, in the kind of style that paint by number would do. And this one just decided, you know what, I'm just gonna paint that black round blue. And so there's really no paint by number going in that, but they are both from the same kit. And what I do find interesting as well, the one that did not follow the kit is 2850 and the one that does is actually 3250 um you know so you know uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder beautiful dog but uh definitely shows that art is a very unique process so if you're a regular uh, watcher to my channel you'll know that katie from vintage and vinyl and i are on a, a mission to give love to the trunk down elephants so thumbs up to trunks down and it, primarily because so many people focus on the good luck elephants with their trunks up we've just feel that you know the left out elephants with their trunks down don't get a lot of love and this is a very good example of how prevalent the trunk up uh, motif is on this shelf there is the candle that has trunk down and the stained glass yeah, I'm, that's trunk up it's kind of in the middle he hasn't he hasn't decided all of these this one is trunk down but he's also damaged trunk up trunk up all trunk up there oh there's a trunk down or ornament didn't see that one i did see this piece which i wouldn't have thought was very old but what i found on this on the sticker it has the zip code from pre-1963 so it is a little bit older um some books but then again all of the individual pieces even the stuffed ones they are trunk up so thumbs up for trunk down do not ignore your trunk down elephant friends uh, make sure you give them a home 
uh, because they are deserving of love just as much as the trunk up. And hello again. I ended up not being able to film a lot at the Brass Armadillo. It was a little bit busier. Uh, it's, a, it's just a massive space, and unfortunately, I don't think I got a really good shot of the whole area. But it, a lot of aisles, I did show the aisles of um, the... Uh, the aisles of the showcases, uh, but they also just have traditional booths as well. And they're relatively long. And so there would just be parts where I was trying to start recording and just invariably people were coming through. And so they're getting a little loud, uh, just ended up not doing as many uh, clips inside as I would have liked. So I'm just going to combine the clips that I took in the store with uh, some of the uh, more of a haul video to show some of the things that I actually picked up. So I will start with one of the areas I did film, and that was in the little elephant, uh, that little elephant section. I got to the elephants that I had pointed out. Uh, so this one was funny because even as I was filming, I had not seen him hanging on the wall. I had already looked to see what was available in the trunks down. Thumbs up for trunks down. Um, and I had not actually noticed him. It was when I was filming, you know, holding the camera in a different way and I saw him hanging up. So I thought he was cute. So I picked him up. Uh, and then this one, I think I specifically had mentioned in the video because I had already looked at this one. I thought he was cute. Again, one of the few that had the trunk down. And this was a case that I, I talked to a couple of resellers and I do find myself in a much better position now after doing this for about a year and a half and you know, actually doing being a reseller for about a year and a half that I can look at things, I can recognize things, I can sometimes date things, but I'm wrong all the time. And this is one of those situations where at first glance, I can 100% thought I was wrong, or I thought it was it was modern, and I still picked it up. I still looked at it because I thought even if he's modern, I thought he was cute. And because trunk down elephants aren't, they're not rare, but they aren't as common as that video showed. I'm like, well, you know, I'm just gonna kind of see what his price is. So he is a uh, a little um, like tea candle, tea light candle holder. One of the things, now it was taped shot, so I didn't actually see this when I picked it up. You can actually see the tea light has a gold cord wrapped around it. So that should have been a clue that this is a little bit older than I thought it was, but I didn't see that. But when I went to look for the price, I saw the bottom. And this is something that I bring up all the time because it is, in my opinion, one of the best ways to date something, um, in a range at least is you can see there's a two digit zip code. So it says Dayton 14 uh, comma O. So some people may look at that and not even realize that is a two digit zip code, which only existed from 1948 to 1963. So this little trunk down votive candle is older than 1963. So I thought that was kind of interesting that I wouldn't have guessed him to be that old. And then, so he does have some age to him. He's super adorable. And I'm going to have him in one of my uh, live sales, which I typically have on Thursday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern here on this channel. So those I showed during the video. So you, those, you, those you've seen. This one you would not have seen. I picked this one up and admittedly didn't know until I got home whether I was right. But I have done, uh, I did a series of some videos, I think I did as a haul video, uh, but I know I included them in a lot of my live sales and then I was also selling them on um, Etsy, a series of Abingdon pottery pieces. Now, Abingdon pottery uh, pretty much only existed around the 30s to the 40s and then it folded. Then at that time, Hager bought, uh, maybe some others did too, but hey, uh, Abingdon was an Illinois pottery Hager's also an Illinois pottery, so Hager pottery picked up a lot of Abington's um, molds. So a lot of forms that people recognize as Hager because they were much more prolific do turn out to be Abington. So I saw this shape, which I recognized immediately as an Abington shape or an Abington mold of a candlestick holder. But when I bought it, you can and you can see the remnants here. There was a, a brown felt all the way around here, you know, kind of protect the furniture. So I couldn't tell for sure what it was, but it was a good enough price. And I hadn't seen that design before. And I felt that that was earlier, that that to me looked like one of the 30s designs. Uh, so I took a chance on it, bought it, brought it home, ripped off the brown felt, 
and it does say it's Abingdon, USA. So this is Abingdon Pottery. And I like kind of the underdog, kind of like the down, the trunk down elephants. I like the underdog companies. And so Abington, you know, it, it developed art pottery during the depression because what it had started building was uh, they primarily did um, bathroom fixtures. So like toilets and sinks, like the really, really heavy clay uh, utility pieces uh, in Southern Illinois. And so their pieces do tend to be a little bit heavier. I mean, for a candlestick, this is, seems a little bit heavy. Um, but, you know, they, they tried to do something new during the Depression, and they were successful and did some really great shapes. It just, unfortunately, they, they made, made it through the Depression. They just didn't make it much past that. Um, so it's just one of those little flashes in time. And so I was really excited to pick it up, even if it had been Hager or just not been marked and just been a cool candlestick. I still think it's cool. Uh, but I was extremely happy when I discovered it was Abington. So, again train your eye, and sometimes you don't have to flip things over to see, but it's always nice, trust, but verify. And uh, another item that I had found, I've already done my Christmas in July sale, but I'm sure I will just drop Christmas things, you know, particularly as Christmas approaches, and I couldn't pass these up. I haven't, I tried to research them, I tried to Google Lens them, and I didn't have any luck, so I'm hoping people might recognize these and might be able to tell me what they are. Um, I, they have the look to me of Culver. I've had some Culver with this gold uh, before, but they are Christmas tumblers. So you can see they've got the white, you know, is painted on there and then just so heavily accented in gold. I just feel, you know, a great mid-century modern look, you know, that Christmas tree ornament shape. This is just, they're just a cool pair of tumblers. So I was really excited to pick them up. I will be selling these I, probably in one of my live sales, maybe Etsy, but I'll probably just do it in one of my live sales. But I would, I always like to know what I'm selling because again, I'm trying to train my eye. I felt they could be Culver, but I could be completely wrong. This one, I was super excited to get because, well, let me start it closed. So at the beginning, it looks just like a book. And when you start opening the book, it looks like, it looks like a boring book. It looks like it's just a bunch of letters. Okay, so that was that was part of it. That's fine. But then I kind of like was playing around with it. And then I looked at the book. And I'm like, oh, cool. There's there's all these really great graphics. But then I'm like, well, wait. The letters are one side and the pictures. What? How is this book written? Well, it's not a book. It is a wall chart. And the reason they were showing up in a weird, like they kind of were flipped, is because when you would open the wall chart, see if I can get it to actually open. When you open the wall chart, good lord. Ah, there it is. Now I can't see you. When you open the wall chart, you have the letters at the top. So clearly this was, I would assume, I say clearly, assume, uh, clear, I would say this is for classroom, that you've got how the penmanship of how the letters are done, but then underneath it, you've got the, the pictures of what matches it. So not really the best, you know, way to show it. Hello. Um, but I thought it was really cool. It was also, should it was obvious as I was figuring out that if something to do with a wall hanging, because it does have, you can see there are little places where the uh, where it was hung. Yeah, you know, they were using tacks to hang this. So this was, it's kind of like a, it's it still it seems like it's paper based, but it's 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 kind of well laminated, but almost to the point where it makes it plasticky. You can see there's a sheen to the to the paper, but it is still. I would say I would still consider it paper. Um, and the back side does not seem to be laminated. There's a little bit more of a roughness to that. Uh, it is, I think I found a date on it. It is copyrighted 1973. This would be big. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten panels. And each panel is seven and a half inches wide. So 70 and a half, 70 inches, um, 71 inches. So no, 75 inches. And let's see, six feet is 72. 
inches. This is over six feet wide. Also, when I was measuring it, see if I can show it, if it shows up. You can kind of see, uh, no. I thought there was like a little laminate between, it's just they, they have a little gray line between each, but it's really just a colored line. I thought I thought it was something to do with the laminate. Uh, there's a couple condition issues. It does have the holes at the top. There's a couple places where probably people like me, after it was available for sale, tried to open it, and so there's a couple of very small tears. But there's nothing that uh, bothers the artwork. And realistically, this is not something I would anticipate anyone would hang anymore, unless you're, you know, you you decorate with a, a classroom or you have vintage teaching materials. This to me is just as much as I hate when things get ripped apart for uh, junk journaling. Some of the graphics, this isn't even for junk journaling. These are frameable. I mean, these are works of art by themselves. These individual um, uh, letter, you know, the, the things that match the letters. You can do something with letters too, but some of these just, they're just amazing graphics and they're just, they're, it needed to be saved. You know, again, it was showing some damage already. It needs to go to right, the right home because it's, it's you know, 1973, so we're not talking about historic, although I'm older than this, so I'm feeling historic. Uh, the It just needs to be saved. You know, it's, it's kind of like one upgrade from true ephemera because something like this would have been designed to be saved for a while because you'd think a, a teacher would kind of reuse it each, uh, each year. But stuff like this isn't going to last forever unless it's taken care of. And so that is uh, why I picked it up. And that'll probably, it'll probably just end up in a live sale. Maybe Etsy, but probably just a live sale because of some of the condition issues. I can show it easier in a live sale than I'd be able to show it on Etsy. So I probably will do that in a live sale. Now, speaking of things that are paper that need to be saved, my last item that I picked up was super exciting to pick up because I thought it was super unique and I thought it was uh, something that I already knew who I would want to buy it. So this was an item, when I picked it up, it was propped open, it was in a sealed bag, and I had to break all protocols and take it up to the front desk and ask if I could open the bag, because it was relatively expensive. It was by far the most expensive thing that I purchased that day, and it, because I was looking at it potentially for someone else, I wanted to make sure exactly what I was getting. But this is what, it was in a bag that was sealed up and stapled shut, um, and you can see in the middle, it's the it's talking about steamship lines, and then this was the opposite side, the cover. So you could see it. So you could see that the, it's kind of there's a laminated cover. There's kind of like a I don't know what this is considered, but there is a wrap to the paper. It's not leather, but it is some sort of a, a covering, and you can kind of see in the corner there it's it's got the little tapering to show that it was wrapped so this this has been covered up it's been stitched to hold the laminating in for in place and if you can see it it says it is a um nasm holland america line so you're getting some idea of what this is and luckily because it was sealed up they'd written you know notes on the tag and so what this was and it was a it was owned or gifted to a gentleman on the SS Potsdam in 1900. So the name is in the front. It is a ocean fairy log. Just check, I mean, I've never even heard of such a thing existing. And it is copyrighted 1897. So you've got little charts in here. You've got a place to actually do the log book. You've got, you know, conversion charts, knots converted into miles, uh, time at different places. So like what time is it in Amsterdam at the same time in Rome? Um, passenger, uh, passenger steamship lines, flags of the merchant marine likely to be seen on the ocean ferry. So that's this whole middle section, which are kind of like linen pages. And it describes all of the ships. And then, like this one, it showed what their flags would look like. That was that centerfold piece again. Uh, international signal codes. There's a couple other color pages, you know, dropped in there. So what the nautical flags would look like. Uh, and then there's a place as for use of the diary, and a place to hold autographs. Now, other than the name of John 
Eckelry, or whatever that name is, uh, with the date, 1900. Unfortunately, it's not filled in at all, but it's just kind of a very cool piece of ephemera that was very specific and would be great for anyone who's collecting any sort of nautical pieces. So if you've been hanging out at my live chats, you might know where this was, where my mind was headed. Uh, and so, yes, this is, uh, does end up going to Dining at Sea. Um, I actually FaceTimed him during the, uh, at the store to see if this was something that he would want just to make sure because it was more valuable uh, and more expensive that I didn't want to take a flyer on it uh, for something that was so specialized. And he fell in love with it and absolutely wanted to take it. So this is heading to him. So uh, very excited. And he will also be, um, this is not why I got it, but it's you know, one of those benefits that if you uh, work with a reseller or work with a seller on multiple occasions and they know what you collect, when we go out shopping, I am I am thrilled to be able to find something that I know somebody would want. You know, one, I'm a huckster. I want to make money. I do want to sell things. That's why I'm here. But I'm a trusty huckster, and my goal is to get the right things in the right people's hands. And sometimes I don't even need to make a lot of money to make that happen. Um, you know, no offense, but this was in the middle of landlocked Iowa. I don't know what a merchant marine list, you know, what a book like this would have been, where it might have gone. Uh, so I'm making sure it's going to the hands of a collector that probably would not have come across it living not in Iowa. So super happy to have this. And he is going to be joining me for a deep dive uh, later in August. He is coming up on August 15th. He is going to be doing a deep dive uh, dining at sea, which is his Instagram handle. Uh, he will be doing a, uh, Sam will be doing a deep dive with me covering his dining, his dining at sea uh, maritime travel menu collection. So stay tuned for that. That's a Sunday, 15th. If you're missing it, if you don't see this until after that, no big deal. It'll be on my archived on my channel uh, under my trusty vintage deep dives as um, travel menus. So keep an eye out for that one. So that was it. That was what I picked up. So it was a, I was very happy with and, pr and productive with what I received or what I picked up. Uh, just unfortunately, not as much video to kind of go to the pr the beginning part of this. So instead of making this a separate video from the shop with me, you're getting both. So hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, if you've gotten this far and you're not a subscriber, I'd really appreciate you going and hitting the subscribe button, maybe hit the like button, comment on the video, share it with your friends. Any of those types of things does help my channel and does help this video get seen. And it gives me an idea of what people like to see. So thanks for your time. Thanks for putting your trust in Trusty Huckster. And I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Well, show me a sign if you're wishing me to stay. Otherwise, I say goodbye and finish out the day. And that sunrise in the morning and you got nothing to say. Oh, that's when I'll be headed on my